In today's video, I'm going to cover how I personally fertilize my food forest here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. I'm actually constantly fertilizing my fruit trees and it's because I have hens. I have that constant input and so that's really one of the main methods, but I actually use a variety of different fertilizers and there are really two main camps when it comes to fertilization. You can go the synthetic route, chemical based, or you can go the organic route, um, put down organic material. The bugs, microbes will break that down and then in turn uh, the fruit trees will consume it. So I have two hens in my backyard. This here is Francesca and then this is Catherine and these two girls actually have really changed my fertilizing routine over the years. Their waste is like gold to my yard. Um, it's one of the main benefits of having a couple backyard hens um, beyond the eggs. So I'm gonna show you my daily routine with their waste. So this is their coop. Uh, they spend their evenings in here, as do most chickens. And this is what they would leave waste-wise within just that one evening. So I've got two, so you can see a little pile there and then a little pile here, along with a bunch of feathers as one of them is molting, which is pretty typical around this time of the year. So there's waste there, and then they do have this little sand area that they spend some time in, as well as this large run. So especially during summer, I do not free range them. They're in this misted, shaded, 20-foot run here and so a lot of their waste is left in here. All right so the amount of waste can obviously vary day to day and how long they spend in the pen but I get about that much maybe 20% more on any given day. The reason I don't want to just leave it in this run is because it's not going to any use if it just kind of composts in place over time in their pen. I want to put this waste to use in the garden so that it can go to my plants and trees. So you could do a couple different things. You could use this as what you mix with your browns uh, to compost. I don't do that. I'm a little bit lazier. So what I do is I'll go to the corner of the yard to start with. my lime tree and I'll just chuck that there. Here you can see another pile from yesterday. Uh, this stuff will eventually break down with irrigation with time. It's just laid loosely on top. It's not going to burn the plants. I've never had that issue. I'm also not concerned about any kind of bacterial problem or microbes in it um, because it's not in direct contact with the fruit. Now when it comes to using that kind of manure for your vegetable beds you definitely want to fully compost that you know for six months go through that whole process where you're turning the pile and all that stuff definitely don't put raw manure you know in a vegetable bed like this no matter what it is whether it's leafy greens or tomatoes or squash or any any kind of vegetable that you're consuming fresh like that but how do i feed my vegetable beds I just use a synthetic. When it comes to organic material, it can take anywhere from a month to three months to break down depending on the weather. Uh, the warmer the weather, you know, the faster it'll break down. As the season cools, it's going to take longer for those microbes to break that down. So when it comes to vegetables, because we have such short seasons for vegetables, I want to make sure I'm getting the nutrients into them right away when I feed. So that's one of the main differences between synthetic and organic fertilizer is the synthetics are available to the plants right away. So I use just your basic uh, tomato food. Arizona Best is what I pick up at the big box stores, as you can see in the picture there. And that seems to work quite well for my, my vegetables. Uh, this is a grass. It needs nitrogen above everything else. So what I do in addition to a couple servings of chicken manure each year is I will provide it a slow release NutriCoat. That's a synthetic slow release, believe it's six months of fertilizer so it just constantly 
provides the plant nitrogen, which helps keep the plant uh, growing, you know, nice green leaves and putting on these new shoots. They're very heavy feeders, so that's another step I take. I just feed them that once a year. So nothing too difficult. And I do that just so that the plant can feed consistently. If you just uh, do manure a few times a year, I don't think that that's gonna be enough to support the growth of bamboo. So guavas, bananas, papayas, those are all really um, heavy feeders. Again, they need a lot of nitrogen. So just a couple applications of chicken manure isn't gonna quite cut it um, to really see the growth. So another fertilizer that I use that's natural in the garden is Mexican sunflower. Okay, I've got a stand here. I've got them all over the yard, but this is a chop and drop plant. Okay, so this has very high nitrogen in the plant material. So all I do is every few weeks or so, I just chop down the branches and then I lay them around the plants. And as this Mexican sunflower material decays and gets broken down by the microbes, it's gonna release nitrogen to these plants. So that whole permaculture aspect, you know, where you're growing all your inputs, I can't do all of it, but I try to do as much as I can. And when it comes to fertilizer, um, that's one step you can take. Uh, this plant not only provides great natural fertilizer, but uh, it responds very well to chopping, so it grows really fast and provides shade as well. So it's a really great plant to have in your yard for a lot of reasons, but definitely utilize it here, um, again, for these really nitrogen-hungry plants. So I've been talking to you about specific plants, you know, and their NPK needs, but another thing I want to stress is definitely go and do a soil test to make sure you know what's in your own soil. You want to make sure you understand what you actually need in your soil and then also what the plants need. And what I'll tell you is nitrogen is generally always the nutrient that's lacking when I do a soil test on my yard. And that's because nitrogen is the first thing to leave. It off gases, um, you know, just if you expose your nitrogen fertilizer to the sun and air, it's going to off gas and lose its efficacy essentially. So nitrogen is one thing that you'll probably always have to put down regularly if you want to see good green growth out of your plants. Uh, potassium, I will say that I do need to supplement more regularly. And phosphorus, once you've got that level built up in your soil, it stays there a very long time. So just be very careful not applying too much of that phosphorus because you could cause really high levels, excess phosphorus, which is not only bad for the environment with runoff, but also can cause lockout of your nutrients so that your plants will actually starve even when you put down nutrients. Now there are certain plants that don't want nitrogen and I learned the hard way with this guy. This is a lychee. They do not like nitrogen. They're very prone to burning. So I do not put any kind of high nitrogen on this plant. What I do with this is really just give it molasses to give it energy and that's about it it's honestly best to just go with some compost something that's very light in npk so that you don't burn it on my rose bushes i'll use a different approach organic but i will get a bag of alfalfa pellets from my local tractor supply and i'll put about a cup down on the soil around the plant soak that in really well it starts breaking down and we'll feed these roses for a couple months i find they respond really well to that i don't need to supplement the bloom with um, bone meal you know any kind of high phosphorus fertilizer i did use a lot of heavy phosphorus fertilizers in this area a long time ago and every time that i test soil here i can see there are still very high levels of phosphorus there so i want to avoid putting even more down because I want to prevent that lockout. But I find the alfalfa to be a nice organic source, 
provides the micro and macronutrients these roses like and need. Okay, so let's talk container culture. How do I fertilize my container fruit trees? Well, outside of the lychee, these all get the same treatment, whether it's a blueberry bush, whether it's jibota kava, dragon fruit, mangoes, grumichama, avocado, or the other tropical cherries I've got in container culture. So one thing to note is unlike my in-ground plants that are dealing with high alkalinity in the soil, these container plants all have ideal soil mix. There's a large percentage of peat moss and the soil pH in my containers on average is around six to six and a half. So they're kind of in that ideal range so that they can take up nutrition. And that allows me the latitude to put in a synthetic and, and really be lazy about my, my fertilization. So with all of these plants, for the last couple years, I've just been using an Osmocote. I will just follow the directions on the Osmocote. And in spring, I will put down that, work it into the topsoil in every one of these containers. And I am then done fertilizing these for the rest of the year. So despite that I'm feeding all of these plants the same NPK, they're all looking really good. They're putting on great growth. I will say the mangoes have taken off the most with this fertilization schedule, but they all seem to do pretty well. So I don't get into, you know, tailoring the NPK to a jibota kava versus a mango just going with the plain osmocote and that's what most of your nurseries are going to be using as well. I find it gives a good macro and micronutrient profile and they're able to uptake that. When it comes to the in-ground plants, I do something different than the container plants and I'm going with a water-soluble food. So between spring and summer, every three to four weeks, I'm gonna be putting down a water-soluble fertilizer. It's called Peter's Foliar Special. It's got a fairly high nitrogen base to it. It's very acidic. Um, one of the reasons I really love that fertilizer is it's got components in it that drop the pH down when mixed with water to like 5.5 to 6, which means that when I fertilize these plants, they're going to uptake it. And a water-soluble synthetic is going to be taken up right away. So these plants have really responded well to that. So in fall, you know, I'm not trying to push these plants as hard as I am spring and summer. So at that point, I'm going to drop to an organic fertilizer. And I'll use a product called Hollytone. It's an organic, granular, slow release. And it will feed these plants during the fall. They're not going to put on spectacular growth. But again, that product does have elemental sulfur in it baked into the mix. So it is going to, again, help these plants eat the food um, as it releases into the soil. So definitely doing a hybrid with the in-ground subtropicals. It seems to be working. And just to mention the in-ground plumerias, I treat very similar to my subtropical in-ground fruit trees. They are also getting a monthly application of the water-soluble fertilizer from spring all the way to early fall. Our lows start consistently going below 50. I definitely don't want to be feeding anymore. And that's because I don't want these plants to be actively pushing growth when our weather gets cold because that will zap you know new growth and just worth mentioning with my pond i do not put any fertilizer in for my water lilies or aquatic plants that's the beauty of an ecosystem pond is my fish do all the work they fertilize the plants so it's really hands-off when it comes to fertilizing this and maybe I don't have the best bloom set as someone who puts that down, but I don't want to create water quality problems by putting fertilizer in the water. So I just completely stay away from that. So I've been feeding like this for the last two to three years. What I did prior to that was definitely different as I have different inputs in my yard, namely the, the hens and the Mexican sunflower. Uh, but this is working for me right now. If you're doing something different and it's working for you, I encourage you to stick with that. It's all about finding what works in your yard for your climate and the fruit trees that you're growing. Thanks for watching and happy fall.